The RTX 5060 Ti was never meant to be a 4K GPU and should be played at an ideal resolution of 1080p or 1440p. That said, we don't all have access to our most ideal monitor. So what if you're going to be playing on a 4K monitor with Nvidia's latest mid-range GPU? Is it going to be terrible? Today we're going to see what it takes to make it work, with the goal being 60 FPS or roughly thereabout, and a good gaming experience. For our experiment, we'll be maxing out game settings whenever and wherever possible. The first thing we'll do to improve performance is use Nvidia's DLSS, though we won't go below the performance setting. After that, we'll try lowering the eye candy. I won't be using frame generation much in this video because of the performance issues. However, there are a couple games where it does actually work, and I'll show you one later on in the video. Our test system will be the Small Form Factor Network Test Bench. This is an Intel 13900K with 64 gigs of memory, 360 millimeter IIO, and the Zotac Gaming RTX 5060 Ti 16 gig Twin Edge OC. All the videos were captured using the internal recording of the NVIDIA app in HEVC. This typically causes a 5% performance penalty. Let's begin with Cyberpunk 2077, which continues to be a heavy game to run on any GPU. The RTX 5060 Ti was able to get 60 FPS with the high preset and DLSS set to performance in 4K resolution. Balanced mode would drop into the 50s. In this instance, I captured the footage in one of the more demanding areas, while also picking fights with several factions at the same time. The game was quite playable and enjoyable, while also still looking really good. Just don't expect to use path tracing with the 5060 Ti. Next up is Doom Eternal. Id Tech has one of the most efficient game engines in the industry, and it shows. No DLSS was needed here, and the settings were cranked up to max, aka Ultra Nightmare. The game ran at 60 FPS with ray tracing turned on at 4K without an issue. You might see some drops later on in the more open areas, but that can be cleaned up fairly easy with a few settings tweaks. Moving on to an oldie but a goodie, Battlefield 1. Battlefield 1 is almost a decade old, but still looks fantastic and plays better than many modern games. The 5060 Ti was easily capable of 4K ultra settings at 60 FPS or better. Okay, now it's time to ask the question, can the 5060 Ti run Crisis? Well, Crisis Remastered. At 4K in DLSS performance mode, the 5060 Ti was capable of running Crisis with max settings except for RT. RT had to be dropped to high. The frame rate did have occasional drops below 60 FPS, but overall it was a good experience. Setting DLSS to balanced mode puts the FPS in the low 50 range. Now let's go from a tropical island to the mean streets of 1980s Detroit with Robocop. Robocop is an Unreal Engine 5 game that ran very well on the 5060 Ti at 4K. DLSS was set to quality and lumen reflections were turned on. This yielded roughly 60 FPS plus or minus a few frames. Turning off DLSS entirely and using DLAA dropped it into the 40 to 50 FPS range. This is still well above the 30 FPS quality mode on PS5. Another Unreal Engine 5 game is Immortals of Avium. It's a heavier game than Robocop to run despite having the same engine. The 5060 Ti provided a playable experience at 4K max settings if you set DLSS to performance. You'll note I said playable not a 60 FPS experience. The game could easily drop into the 40s. 
you're going to have to drop settings or resolution entirely to get to 60 FPS. Settings are a little odd in this game and can affect performance in weird ways. So I recommend looking up the Digital Foundry Performance Guide. Satisfactory has finally come out of beta and has presented a solid challenge to the 5060 Ti at 4K. Frame rates at ultra settings were dropped into the 40s. Setting DLSS to balanced mode gave a mostly 60 FPS experience with a few drops in the 50s when you're out looking at the big vistas. Grounded is a couple years old now, but still looks great. The 5060 Ti managed 60 FPS at 4K with high settings and the occasional dip below 60. DLSS wasn't an option and the game uses an older version of FSR that frankly looks awful. I'd rather take the frame rate dips. In the same genre as Grounded is Valheim, with its gorgeous retro voxel style graphics. Unfortunately, no matter what combination of settings I chose, it would drop below 60 FPS at 4K. That said, even at the highest settings, it was running in the 50 FPS range. Definitely something you'll want to have a VRR monitor for, aka turn on G-Sync and it'll play quite nicely at 4K. Switching genres to Helldivers 2, 4K at 60 FPS was possible in the RTX 5060 Ti, but only at medium settings and with ultra quality upscaling. Switching to high yielded frame rates that fell into the 50s, which is still a quite good experience, but you'll really need that VRR capable display. Continuing with the sci-fi theme, Guardians of the Galaxy runs at 60 FPS at 4K max settings with ray tracing turned on, but DLSS has to be set to balanced mode. Frame rates did drop into the 50s with these settings though, and switching to DLSS performance mode removed most of those dips. Dragon Age Veilguard. Vale this game took some experimentation, but I was able to make the game really shine at 4K, albeit with DLSS. First, I forced the new Transformer model for DLSS in the NVIDIA app. This gave performance mode a good visual improvement. Next, I used DLSS performance mode, obviously, with ultra settings, except for the textures, which were set to the highest settings. Finally, and this is very, very rare for me, I turned on frame gen. I usually don't touch frame gen as I find it causes visual issues that I easily see and laggy movement. This wasn't a problem in Dragon Age Veilguard. Vale Gameplay was smooth at 60 FPS and felt good. However, you will need a VRR display that supports high refresh rates as I could not lock the game to 60 FPS. Next up is The Ascent. The Ascent is a three-quarter view twin-stick shooter that looks and plays fantastic. On the 5060 Ti, I was able to hit 4K max settings with ray tracing on, with DLSS set to performance mode. The graphics looked excellent and it played very well, especially from a couch gaming style. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle is our next contestant, and this game took a lot of tuning. It really does push the 5060 Ti to its very limits. For 60 FPS at 4K, you'll need to have DLSS performance mode turned on. You can use ultra settings, but no path tracing. This gave a mostly 60 FPS experience and looked very good. Alternatively, 
if you don't mind 30 FPS. You can run 4K with high settings and path tracing turned on the low. Of course, DLSS will still have to be in performance mode. Let's move on to some racing games. Forza Horizon 5 ran well, but not quite perfectly on the RTX 5060 Ti. At 4K max settings with 2x MSAA, you can expect the frame rates in the 50 FPS range at native resolution. To get a consistent 60 FPS, you'll need to use DLSS quality mode. Once you turn that on, the game will run very smoothly and look excellent. Next up is Dirt 5, which still looks great even for being a few years old. The 5060 Ti was able to run the 4K Ultra with ray tracing in the 50 FPS range natively. Without ray tracing, it runs closer to 60 FPS. Unfortunately, to get a consistent 60 FPS, I had to drop the settings to high. While the game doesn't support DLSS, you can drop the internal render resolution to 1800p and it will still look very, very good and likely give you over 60 FPS even at max settings. Team Sonic Racing is probably the best kart-based racer for the PC and the 5060 Ti runs it without any problems at 4K. At max settings, you can easily achieve a high refresh rate experience, hitting as high as 200 FPS at times. A lock 60, 120 FPS, 144, or even 160 is no problem for the 5060 Ti. And finally, we have Pacer. Fans of the Wipeout style racer will be happy to hear that they can use the 5060 Ti to easily play at 4K, max settings, at roughly around 100 FPS. Okay, let's wrap this up. So, if you have to play on a 4K monitor with an RTX 5060 Ti, are you going to have a bad experience? Based on the games we just looked at, I'm going to say no, you're not. Older games and games with simpler art styles run very well at 4K on the 5060 Ti. Newer games, well, you might have to drop a few settings or use upscaling. Personally, I can easily spot pop-in from lower settings and I prefer upscaling to solve the issue. Upscaling technology has come a long way in allowing cards like the 5060 Ti to give a good experience even at Ultra HD resolutions. Will it be as good as an RTX 4090? Absolutely not. No way. But it's not bad either. In fact, especially from a living room viewing distance, it works quite well. There's also frame gen if you can personally tolerate it. I only used it in one game, but the technology is making steady progress and a lot of gamers don't even notice it when it's turned on. Ultimately though, that is up to you. Well, this wraps up this video. If you enjoyed it, please toss us a like and we would be thankful if you subscribed. You are always welcome to come visit us on smallformfactor.net and join our community of SFF PC enthusiasts even if you don't have a small form factor PC. Thank you, and we'll see you on the next one.